Hey, hey, what's up? Gaming addicts, man. Hey, this video I'm about to show y'all, I don't know if it's new, I don't know if it's old, but it's new to me. So I'm gonna make a video about this damn thing because I'm gonna tell y'all what, man. Look, I know, I know us as gamers, man. I know us as gamers, man. We're sick and tired of the way these companies is treating us, man. Number one, with just the poor production in games. Number two, just the lack of good ideas. And number three, all these microtransactions just to play the game, man. Like, like it's a sad day. I mean, it's a sad day for the industry, man. It really is, like, I mean, at a time when we should be our happiest, like, we're really at our lowest because, like, again, we're just so underappreciated, like, it's crazy, it's, it's, it's a shame, man, it's a shame. I remember a time, I've been playing games for a long time, and I've been playing games since, like, 86, you know what I mean? So, it's a, it's a shame to remember when a game was being made it was about showing your skill, and it was about the people who are going to be playing your game. All y'all young people out there, man, y'all y'all came up in a, in an era where you have no idea just how bad it is right now for for the industry as far as the disrespect. But um, yeah, so it, it's just sad. It's just sad to think about. So you know, as as a gamer and as a consumer and a fan, you know, of these people's artwork. It's, um, it's crazy. So I know there's been a lot of shit about this game, like that I'm talking, that I'm about to, you know, say something about shit. Um, I, I've just seen a mixture, but overall it seems like there's gonna be a lot of disappointment uh, or there's a, being a lot of disappointment expressed. Uh, just because of the developers of this game here, and it's EA, right? Like, we all know EA and their microtransactions and just the way they... Oh, man, come on now with... <laughs> Golly, just the last couple of years they've had with games, man. My goodness. So, we know that Anthem... We're, we're real nervous, right? We're, we're, we're as excited as we can possibly be for this situation because EA just finds a way, man. But I'm gonna tell y'all what. I'm gonna tell y'all what. Again, this video. Anthem, to me, is, is, is Destiny and Warframe. If they had a fucking kid while they was on acid, right? They was both on acid, right? And they had a kid, and that kid was born inside the Matrix, but was born inside the Matrix with the knowledge of already being Neo, right? Like that's that's what the that's what Anthem is to me, man. Like it could just be me. I just could be super excited about nothing. I don't know. All I know is how I feel. This is how I feel, and this game gets my gears turning, man. You know, like. Like every once in a while, you know, you just, <coughs> excuse me, you just come across them games to just make you feel alive, make you feel like you're ready, you know, <coughs> excuse me, like you're just ready to game, man, like this just seems like one of those games, so super nervous, man, super nervous, just like all of y'all are, but I just wanted to talk about this video, just a, just a little bit about it, again, first time I seen it. It's a little walk through. All I can say is when it comes to the video, all right, you got the guy explaining, right? He's explaining how the game's, you know, doing his thing, going through the procedures, going through weapons, going through, you know, all of these, you know, styles and just everything, you know, he's kind of just explaining each of the characters, right? Or the frames, uh, look, frames, look, there I go already see the suits, but I, Okay, 
I listened to that right and that's okay. But really what I'm looking at when I'm watching this video, I'm looking, cause the game is all about graphics. So I'm really looking at the graphics. You know, I'm looking at the flames when shit's going up in flames. And most, and one of the things, again, that, that just for me personally, what I like to look at uh, or listen to, I guess I should say in this case, is just the sound. How does the game sound? You know, because some games sound like shit. I mean, an explosion always isn't necessarily an explosion. Uh, something being fired isn't necessarily, you know, uh, a, a, a photon cannon, you know, isn't necessarily a photon cannon. Like, like everybody has their own interpretation of what these sounds sound like, you know. So for me, when it comes to games like this, I like to listen. I like to hear what does this sound like, you know. And I'm going to tell y'all, man. Man. I'm looking into the wrong camera. I'm over here. The light is blinding me. I'm over here looking, I think, into the home button. I should be looking over here. I don't know. Um, but, uh, hey, this sound, hey, it got me hype. The graphics got me hype. It looks good. It looks good. So, y'all just watch this video. Enjoy. Leave some comments. Like, so subscribe, comment. Um, hit, click the little bell, you know, do all of that good stuff. But, uh, I don't know. I, I want to play it. I want to play it, man. And if EA, if y'all mess this game up, if y'all mess up my experience, I'm too old to be going through things like this, man. All right. You know, like I'm too old to be going through, to be going through disappointments at this stage of my life on a level that just makes you just angry. There's no sense in that. So don't do not do nothing crazy. Just stick to the script, not the script of the motto of today. Let's, let's take it back, all right? When y'all was making Madden 94 and y'all cared, let's take it back to that time. All right, y'all. Enjoy the video, Gaming Addicts. I'm out. Welcome to the Anthem Gameplay Series. In this first video, we'll take a look at story, progression, and customization. The world of Anthem is a chaotic and ever-changing world abandoned by the Shaper Gods. Humanity survives either in fortified cities or with the use of Javelin exosuits. Javelins are key to your survival by giving you superhuman abilities. Fly, swim, fight, and explore anywhere within the world. That's where you and your friends come in. Part explorer, protector, and adventurer. You are an elite group of pilots called freelancers that are sworn to protect humanity and uncover the mysteries of the world. In the world, the dangers all stem from one mysterious power. The anthem of creation is everything. To control it is everything. Uh, okay, but what could he even do with it? What could he do with the power of life and death, creation and destruction? He would be a god. Imagine all the good that we could do. We decide what's best for the world. The power of pure creation at our fingertips. Your story begins in the middle of this conflict. It will be up to you to head out on missions, silence Shaper ruins, confront enemy factions, and most importantly, Ensure that the Dominion do not get their hands on the Anthem of Creation. Before you head out on these missions, you need to prepare your Javelin. Unlock four base Javelin suits and then build any number of loadouts to customize them for different playstyles. The Interceptor is built for speed. Lightning fast and incredibly agile to get in and out of harm's way. The Ranger is built for precision highly versatile and ready to unleash firepower. The Colossus is built to deal destruction. What it lacks in agility, it makes up for in brute strength and defensive combat power. The Storm is built for extraordinary elemental attacks, devastating power and light armor. No matter which javelin you choose, your loadout can be customized and augmented to match your gameplay style. Your javelin ability has everything to do with the gear you use. Your gear score is the indication of how powerful your javelin is. Each javelin has the following slots. Two for offensive gear, one for support gear, two weapons, 
six components, and one ultimate power that is unique to each javelin type. In this case, we have four loadouts ready to go for the Ranger. Each one I've set up for different play styles. Let's have a look at my team support specialist. We are using the Venom Darts and a Frost Grenade for offensive gear. This will be great for applying ice and acid status and for setting up combos. For support gear, we are using the Bulwark Point, which places a spherical shield in the battle. For weapons, we have a Hammerhead Assault Rifle and the semi-auto sniper rifle. One will give medium range damage, while the other allows for fantastic long range damage. For my six components, I have a selection of items that will help keep my weapons at maximum performance. Before you head out, you have a choice on a number of objectives and ways to play. Continue your critical story mission, pick up quests from people in the fort, including your crew, enter one of the formidable strongholds, or explore the open world in free play. Let's start by checking in with Halleck and continue with one of our story missions. She's us in the Dominion now. Good. It's a freelancer job. Always has been. Ready, Jumpin' One? Ready when you are. We've got your back. You go there and you kick some ass. In this first fight, we are going up against the Dominion Fury. The Fury. The Dominion don't play games. Be careful. The Fury hits incredibly hard and will regenerate itself. It will be important to keep moving and use cover or the bulwark point. Two things to remember. Protect yourself and time your attacks to do maximum damage in bursts. The storm is set up for maximum damage using elemental attacks like lightning strike and flaming orb. Its quickening field will reduce cooldowns within its perimeter allowing everyone to use their offensive powers more often. Timing your ultimate attacks with your team will ensure enemies like the Fury won't have a chance to regenerate. There, you got them. You survived the Fury. You best head back to the fort. I'll let Tassa know we need to talk. At the end of each mission, head back to the fort. Collect your loot, customize your javelin, Pick a new suit and head out for more. This time, let's enter free play. In free play, the map is open to you to explore the way you want, head in any direction, and discover endless activities and receive missions along the way. Run into other players on the map or call in a friend when you need an extra set of weapons to take down the deadliest creatures the world has to offer. Here we see the Colossus and Interceptor are opposites in almost every way, making them a great pair in battle. The Colossus is built to be in the middle of the fight, with its heavy weapons and durable shield. Taunting enemies with Battle Cry will keep enemies focused on it. This will allow the Interceptor to charge in and out of the fight, inflicting its melee damage without being attacked. Powers like Wraith Strike will send out a shadow version of the Interceptor, or use the target beacon to mark an enemy, then charge in with the spark dash to finish it off. In Anthem, build your ultimate arsenal of javelins. Head out into the world and unleash your power. Stay tuned for the next installment that shows you the expanding shared world of Anthem and its massive endgame, including a look at our strongholds.